Swiss banks attract many foreigners to deposit. So what is so unique about it? Today, let's talk about the Swiss bank, who have long held a reputation for anonymity and privacy. Switzerland is the grandfather of the world's tax havens, one of the world's largest offshore financial centers, and one of the world's biggest secrecy jurisdictions and tax havens. The Swiss Bankers Association estimated in 2018 that Swiss banks held 6.5 trillion US dollars in assets, or 25% of all global cross-border assets. The financial sector, and particularly the banking sector, is one of the cornerstones of the Swiss economy. It contributes 9.7% to Switzerland GDP in 2020. Given this dominance, with UBS and Credit Suisse accounting for about half of all Swiss banking assets, it is hardly surprising that bank lobbies have powerful representation within government circles. Switzerland, a country slightly smaller than even the Netherlands by area, had in 2020 a population of less than 9 million. Swiss banks were not reliant on their own domestic talent and market size, but always had an international focus. Little Switzerland always made big money in its international dealings. Geneva was the first major banking center in Switzerland and had close associations with France after many French bankers settled there in the 18th century. Meanwhile, Basel and Zurich were German-facing when the bank Credit Suisse was founded in Zurich in 1856, half of its capital came from Germany. Swiss banking secrecy has old and deep roots, based on three foundations. First, Switzerland's infamous tradition of banking secrecy. Second, its political stability, underpinned by neutrality and its powerful system of direct democracy, and third, a financial consensus rooted in Swiss society which for decades protected the offshore financial services sector against external political challenges. In 1713, long before Switzerland existed as a federal state, the Great Council of Geneva, a cantonal council in Switzerland adopted regulations prohibiting bankers, who were already harboring substantial deposits belonging to European aristocracy, from revealing details about their clients. Catholic French kings, among the earliest known clients of Geneva banks, enjoyed these banks' traditions of secrecy, partly because they did not want to be seen to be dealing with heretical Protestant bankers. Switzerland's reputation for safety, helping attract safe haven financial flows from the nobility in a turbulent Europe, was bolstered when Swiss neutrality was formalized at the Congress of Vienna in 1815. Neutrality means avoiding participation in a war between other states. The First World War precipitated the biggest ever cascade of money into Swiss banks. But this wasn't only about Switzerland's safe haven status. Tax was also a large part of it. As governments hiked taxes to pay for their respective war efforts, many wealthy Europeans escaped their share of the war effort and took their money away to Switzerland. The French preferring French-speaking Geneva, the Germans went to German-speaking Zurich, Basel, and St. Gallen, and the Italians to Lugano in the southern Italian-speaking Swiss canton of Ticino. Meanwhile, commercial interests in warring countries also used Switzerland as a turntable allowing them to keep doing business with the enemy, in secret. As this was happening, Swiss bankers continued to spread their net wider, pushing their wares down market beyond the aristocracies. Meanwhile, the spread of technology and globalization was making capital more mobile, and significant quantities began to come from beyond Europe. Switzerland's role as a top global financial center was further underpinned by a decision to cite the headquarters of the Bank for International Settlements in Basel in 1930. Switzerland enacted its famous banking secrecy laws in 1934, entrenching de facto banking secrecy by making it a criminal offense to divulge information. A widespread and false myth has been propagated that this was done to protect German Jewish money from the Nazis. Before the banking secrecy law of 1934, client confidentiality rules applied, such as exists between doctors and their patients, violation of which was a civil offense, but not a criminal one. The first drafts of the law to criminalize the breaking of banking secrecy were created soon after the onset of the Great Depression, as a way of defending the sector from popular anger about bankers. But in October 1932 officials of the Basler Handelsbank were caught red-handed facilitating tax evasion by members of French high society, among them two bishops, several generals, and the owners of Le Figaro and Lumat newspapers. It was this scandal that created the pressure for the law to be enacted promptly. In the Second World War, a further surge of wealth into neutral safe haven Switzerland created yet another step change in the growth of Swiss banking. 
despite Switzerland's neutrality and a fairly widespread antipathy among the wider Swiss population towards Nazi Germany, Swiss bankers collaborated heavily with Hitler and his regime. Switzerland also supplied the Nazis with electricity and supplies, not to mention financial credit, and facilitated the delivery of strategic equipment. Swiss bankers stashed the proceeds of Nazi loot without question, including gold ingots made from the dental fillings of murdered Jews. They then helped fleeing Nazis hide their loot after the end of the war, and as if that were not bad enough, they made it extremely difficult for surviving relatives of murdered Jews and other victims of the Holocaust to get their money back. Recent reports suggest that Hitler himself had 1.1 billion Reichsmarks, equivalent of 3.6 billion pound today, on deposit in Switzerland. It was only after extreme pressure from the US much later, in the 1990s, that Switzerland grudgingly handed over part of the money. In 1984, the people of Switzerland once again voted in favor of maintaining bank secrecy, by a whopping 73%. Since the Second World War, a number of foreign countries have attempted to penetrate Swiss banking secrecy. Until the late 2000s, these attempts largely failed. Switzerland was eventually forced to make significant concessions on banking secrecy in 2008, when the United States began to investigate and prosecute senior Swiss bankers, launching high-profile criminal cases against UBS, Credit Suisse and other banks. When Martin Leakey, the head of UBS private banking in the Americas was arrested in April 2008, the Swiss public was surprised to learn that the U.S. Department of Justice had initiated proceedings against UBS. Soon afterwards, the U.S. Internal Revenue Service, or IRS, filed a request for assistance with their Swiss counterparts. A major Swiss bank had been fingered by a whistleblower. Bradley Birkenfeld, a former UBS employee in offshore private banking for U.S. clients, had supplied U.S. authorities with juicy details. He described how UBS bankers broke commitments that the bank had made with U.S., and how UBS had helped U.S. clients avoid reporting assets to the U.S. Internal Revenue Service using offshore constructions. Birkenfeld also revealed how UBS bankers based in Switzerland illegally solicited new clients in the U.S. and even how diamonds had been smuggled into the U.S. in a tube of toothpaste to repatriate the proceeds of tax evasion. One of few Americans allowed into the mysterious world of Swiss banking. It was obviously uh, uh, highly restricted to only people who worked there, so we had access through um, secure IDs to get into the floors that we were working on. It was a, a very tight um, work environment. The way he describes it, the job sounds like part personal assistant, part spy, complete with encrypted computers and underground vaults filled with untold riches. Threatened with prosecution in the U.S., which UBS might not have survived during the financial crisis, the bank pushed the Swiss authorities to be allowed to cooperate with U.S. authorities and to supply client data, in violation of Swiss bank secrecy laws. On February 2009, UBS reached a deferred prosecution agreement with Department of Justice under which UBS paid a $780 million fine and provided the data on 250 clients. The danger of imminent prosecution was averted, but the IRS was still not satisfied, and it launched a civil case against UBS. After further negotiations, this was transferred in August 2009 into an agreement between the US and Switzerland in which Switzerland has to supply account information for 4,450 UBS clients within a year, an unprecedented leak. After that, the European Union is demanding the automatic exchange of information too, a policy non-EU member Switzerland will have difficulty avoiding if it wants access to Europe's financial markets. In 2017, Switzerland adopted the Automatic Exchange of Information or AEOI, which meant they would now release limited financial information to certain countries for the sole purpose of tax auditing. This agreement includes the common reporting standard, which means that clients' names, addresses, tax number, birth date, account number, account balance, and gross investment income must all be disclosed, but only for the purpose of tax auditing. This brings us to the present day, when in 2018, the Swiss Federal Tax Administration began exchanging bank account data with tax authorities in other countries. So, are Swiss bank accounts still secret in the year 2022? Yes and no. Switzerland has faced significant pressure from outside entities to roll back on their secrecy laws. However, the Swiss have done their best to minimize the impact of these pressure. It is still a serious crime to disclose client information. Bankers in Switzerland take this very seriously. 
Further, Switzerland frequently scores in the top three states on the Financial Secrecy Index. However, Switzerland has suffered some serious blows. They've been pressured to freeze roughly 5 billion Swiss francs Russian accounts belonging to individuals subject to the US and EU sanctions in 2018. Then in 2019, UBS was fined $4.5 billion for helping wealthy French evade taxes. A Swiss private bank, Julius Baer, paid $547 million to settle another tax evasion case, this time in the US. While Swiss banking secrecy has taken quite a few hits in the 21st century, Swiss banks are still holding in there for the top states for secrecy under the Financial Secrecy Index. And they still value their clients' rights to anonymity and privacy. As the world of international banking is changing, Swiss banks are determined to adapt and maintain their reputation as the top country for offshore banking.